Okay, good morning. My name is Sanna Iltanen, coming from uh, Aalto University, Finland, and working currently at the City Science Lab, uh, developing campus as a service model. Okay, a little bit about what we have done. So uh, the focus today is on the campus service model, or we could even talk about space as a service in more general level. But we also have developed a um, projection tool for map info. So it's now a projection tool for the city scope table uh, built on the GIS application. Okay. No, this is, sorry, this is the direction is wrong. It's not working. Okay. So, uh, campus as a service concept. Uh, we focus there more uh, space as a service than a product. And uh, try to shift uh, the approach of using spaces or uh, building uh, new institutions, not as a standalone uh, buildings, but more uh, shared and distributed network of, of spaces. That's kind of the change of the way working. Okay. Uh, this concept has already been uh, applied uh, to schools on our campus area. This is how we traditionally look uh, the, the, solo, the school if we want, if we need a new school building or uh, space program for, for schools. So we build a, one standalone building, including all the uh, spaces needed for the school. But uh, what we suggest in a no. Ooh. Oh, okay, it's working. Um, so, in our uh, campus as a service concept uh, or school as a service uh, concept, we only build a, a smaller hub for the school, including. Um, only one, some of the core functions or core spaces of the building and the rest of the spaces needed for the school uh, uh, can be uh, utilized in, in campus, campus area. So it's, we can utilize, for example, uh, chemistry labs, sports halls, uh, restaurants, lecture halls, and so on. So, this has uh, been also economically quite successful because uh, building a school, a new school, this way, it's not so heavy investment for the municipality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we think about our model, we also try to build it so that it could be generalized uh, in more um, to other services, other spatial services, workplaces, hotels, and so on. And in the model, we also try to optimize them so that we have some qualities that increase or decrease as we change the level of the how how big part of the spaces are distributed uh, in the solution. So some some of the qualities decrease and some of the increase and somewhere in the between as we change the level of the sprawl. Uh, we could find an optimal solution. What we need for an input, 
the model reads the uh, CTIO JSON, um, the Cityscope table information. Uh, we need building footprints, grid database, of course, and the space list of all space resources we we utilize in the model, and then we have an optional uh, travel cost matrix, which could be a distance or it could uh, be on more general level some travel cost included there, or even the space rents. And the user defines different space resources and, and the level of distribution. And then we need, need to classify the spaces, so that's the simplification we need to do in the, in the model. Okay, the analysis flow goes so that the user uh, defines the location of the school hub with the CityScope table deck, and then the model searches an optimal uh, combination of distributed spaces, and as a result, we see a map presentation of, of, of the solution. Okay, and as a result, we could, if we can change and compare the locations of the school hubs, for example, and utilize this in, in the campus development and utilize this as a decision-making tool. Okay, thank you.